Good afternoon. During today's legislative hearing, we will consider five bills. S-4444, Crow Revenue Act. S-4633, Northeastern Arizona Indian Water Rights Settlement Act of 2024. S-4643, Zuni Indian Tribe Water Rights Settlement Act of 2024. S-4705, Yavapai Apache Nation Water Rights Settlement Act of 2024. And... S-4998, the Navajo Nation Rio San Jose Stream System Water Rights Settlement Act of 2024. S-4444 was introduced by Senator Daines. This bill would transfer subsurface mineral interest located within the Crow Tribe's reservation and currently held by a private owner, the Hope Family Trust, to the Crow Tribe and transfer the Hope Family Trust federal surface land and subsurface mineral rights on BLM lands in the Bull Mountains located outside of the Crow Tribes Reservation. S-4633 was introduced by Senators Kelly and Cinema. This bill would resolve the water rights claims of the Navajo Nation, Hopi Tribe, and San Juan Southern Paiute Tribe in the Colorado River Basin in Arizona, authorize $5 billion in mandatory funding to implement the settlement, and create a 5,400-acre reservation for the San Juan Southern Paiute Tribe in Arizona. S-4643 was introduced by Senators Heinrich and Lujan, and the bill would resolve the Zuni tribe's water rights claims in the Zuni River Basin in New Mexico, authorize $685 million in mandatory funding for its implementation, and provide for the protection of Zuni Salt Lake, a place with great spiritual and cultural significance to the tribe by placing approximately 4,800 acres of land surrounding the lake into trust and withdrawing additional federal lands from future development. S-4705 was introduced by Senators Kelly and Cinema. The bill would resolve the Yavapai Apache Nation water rights claims in the Verde River watershed in Arizona, which is part of the lower basin of the Colorado River, authorize $1 billion in mandatory funding to implement the agreement, and authorize a land exchange in Arizona between the Yavapai Apache and the U.S. Forest Service. Lastly, 4998, Uh, Senator Heinrich and Senator Lujan's bill would resolve the Navajo Nation's water claims in the Rio San Jose Basin in New Mexico, authorize nearly $224 million in mandatory funding to implement the settlement, and authorize the expansion of the Navajo Gallup Water Supply Project to serve Navajo communities in the Rio San Jose Basin that are outside its current service area. Before I turn to Vice Chair Murkowski for her opening statement, I would like to extend a welcome and thank our witnesses for joining us today. I look forward to your testimony and to our discussion. Vice Chair Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate the hearing on these important bills. Um, I'm going to be brief again. Each of these bills would address longstanding water and lands issues while also promoting tribal self-determination in water resources, housing, and tribal energy sovereignty. And I want to just commend and thank the parties. Um, I know you've put a lot of work behind each of these respective matters and I appreciate uh, the, the work and the effort that has gone into that. Starting first with S-4633, this settlement bill would resolve decades of litigation that has locked up the water rights of the Navajo Nation, the Hopi tribe, mm-hmm. and the southern San Juan Paiute tribe to the Colorado River. If enacted, this bill would authorize the construction of a drinking water delivery system to provide piped water to hundreds of native homes for the first time ever. This is significant. I must say that I am concerned about a big price tag, over $5 billion, but I look forward to hearing more about the settlement and how that money will be spent at the hearing. Um, Finally, I want to mention S-4444, the Crow Revenue Act. This bill is modeled on the Northern Cheyenne Lands Act from 2014 that we enacted into law from this committee. It would authorize the transfer of federal coal in the Bull Bull Mountains mine to the Hope family and in exchange require the Hope family to transfer their coal rights within the boundaries of the Crow Reservation to the Crow Tribe. This exchange is predicated on the Hope family entering into a revenue-sharing agreement with the Crow Tribe, but these revenues would help the tribe offset the loss of royalties that have been caused by the closure of, of a mine. The Crow Tribe is located in the Power Basin, the largest coal-producing region in the country, and it's long depended on coal mining royalties and tax revenue to fund essential tribal government services for its neighbors, including care for the elders. I know that there are, there are some that are concerned that this would continue coal production, but we are talking about uh, the Crow Tribe, which has a sovereign right to develop its economic assets. So I'm looking forward 
to hearing the views of our panelists today on this issue and, and these water settlement bills that are before us. And again, I really want to recognize the, the longstanding efforts of so many that have gone into it. I know it's not easy, and I commend you. We are going to, we have a number of opening statements and members wishing to introduce the testifiers. So just so you know the run of show, according to my script, we will, uh, we will start with Senator Lujan, then Danes, then Heinrich, then Kelly, then Cortez Masto. And I'm, I'm not sure exactly why, Catherine, you're the last, but it will be all right. <laughs> Senator Lujan. Thank you, Chair Schatz and Vice Chair Murkowski for holding this important legislative hearing today especially given the unprecedented efforts by tribes to have Congress ratify their Indian water rights settlements after years, sometimes many decades, prayers, and negotiations. I have the honor today of introducing Governor Kukati of Zuni Pueblo. Governor, thank you for all of your leadership in helping to advance the Zuni Indian Tribe Water Rights Settlement Act of 2024, this Congress. The governor has served in this position since 2020, 2023 and is also the secretary of the All Pueblo Council of Governors, which represents the 20 Pueblo nations of New Mexico and Texas. Governor was previously a member of the Tribal Council for over 18 years and served two terms as the chairman of the Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. Prior, the governor served in different roles, including working with the Zuni radio station, its housing authority, and dedicated himself to Zuni language revitalization efforts. Governor has dedicated his career to protecting Zuni way of life, its people, and I'm glad that he is here today to testify on behalf of this historic bill that I co-lead with Senator Heinrich, which will protect Zuni's water rights in the Zuni River and its sacred Salt Lake. Governor, I welcome you and I thank you for your steadfast leadership on this effort and in so many others. Mr. Chairman, thank you and I yield. Thank you very much. Senator Danes. Chairman Schatz, thank you. Schatz. Schatz, thank you. And Vice Chair Murkowski. Uh, I'm proud to be able to introduce Chairman Frank White Clay of the Crow Nation. If memories going back to days in grade school, Longfellow and Bozeman, when the old coyotes lived about three doors down. And Barney, Rachel's dad, was a Crow code talker. I had no idea someday that we'd be sitting here and myself as the center, you as the chairman, having this conversation about Indian country and the Crow tribe, but it's an honor to have you here, sir, and thank you. Uh, the chairman's been a fierce proponent of tribal sovereignty and self-determination. This year alone, the chairman and I have worked extensively to craft and push forward the Crow Tribe Water Rights Settlement Amendments Act, which passed the committee just last week. And then the Crow Revenue Act, which we'll be hearing more on today. Chairman Schatz, thank you for your help in uh, getting this hearing uh, set up for today. As I'm sure the chairman will tell us all shortly, the Crow Revenue Act is critical for the Crow tribe. And this bill couldn't come at really a more important time. With the recent closure of the Absalica mine, the Crow tribe will be able to supplement the loss of that revenue with the new revenues in this bill. This is a win for the Crow tribe. It's a win for our local communities, and it's also a win for the state, which is why I'm proud to say that we have tremendous local support, statewide elected officials, as well as the affected counties. And as the chairman of the Crow tribe will say soon, and I will not speak for you, you speak very well for yourself, Mr. Chairman, I think you're going to hear that from the Crow Tribe as well. I'm excited to hear more from Chairman White Clay. Thanks for making the long journey back to D.C. to represent your people here in Washington. Senator Heinrich. Thank you, Chairman Schatz and Vice Chairman Murkowski. And I, I want to start and just thank you uh, both for considering the Indian Buffalo Management Act a few minutes ago. Um, that legislation will further support growth of uh, tribal bison herds, and I am very grateful for the committee's support. Turning to the hearing agenda, uh, I want to thank you for holding this hearing on the Zuni Indian Tribe Water Rights Settlement Act and the Navajo Nation Rio San Jose Stream System Water Rights Settlement Act. That's a mouthful, but two incredibly important bills uh, to the future of water for New Mexico's tribes. Uh, I am pleased to welcome the Governor of Zuni Pueblo, Arden Kukate, who is here today to provide testimony on the Zuni Water Rights Settlement Act, 
The Zuni people have been stewards of the Zuni River Basin for millennia. Their traditional agricultural practices and careful stewardship of water sustained the tribe over thousands of years. And unfortunately, the United States has failed to protect Zuni's water rights and has allowed their water to be diverted to other purposes. Overuse of water in the Zuni Basin has caused the Zuni people to suffer from a lack of water for their community, their businesses, and their traditional agricultural practices. This injustice continues today. Without reliable access to clean water, it is difficult for Zuni to attract new businesses that create jobs and revenues for the tribe. This legislation would not only fully settle Zuni's water rights claims in the Zuni River Basin, it would also provide funding for several key water infrastructure projects. It is an opportunity for the United States to make the Zuni tribe whole for the water that they have always been entitled to. And it will support Zuni's traditional irrigation practice, their people, and their future business development in a manner that builds resilience in the face of a drying climate. This piece of legislation would also protect the Zuni Salt Lake, a sacred place of great cultural significance to the Zuni tribe and others in the region. I'm also very happy to welcome President of Navajo Nation, Dr. Boo Nigren, who is here to provide testimony for the Navajo Nation Rio San Jose Stream System Water Rights Settlement Act. Uh, this legislation would settle the water rights of the Navajo Nation in the Rio San Jose Basin. It is the final step in an adjudication process that began more than 40 years ago. And in that time, we have seen a ratification of the Southwest further strain water resources for tribes, including the Navajo Nation, that don't have the resources to fully use their water rights. This settlement is an important step towards giving the Navajo Nation an equal voice amongst water users in the Southwest. Today, there are more than 200 Navajo households within the Rio San Jose and Rio Puerco basins without access to running water. These households instead have to rely on hauling water. The lack of reliable drinking water systems in these communities contributed to the widespread health impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic on the Navajo Nation, which took the lives of far too many. I'm committed to working with the Navajo Nation to build a future where they have full access to their water rights, and this access to water will facilitate the preservation of Navajo culture and tradition. Both of these pieces of legislation would implement settlement agreements that have been carefully negotiated between the tribes, the state of New Mexico, neighboring neighboring water users, and the United States. And I want to thank all of the parties for their tireless work in reaching settlements for these basins, and of course, my colleague, Senator Lujan, who is co-sponsoring these settlements along with me. The failure of the United States to work with tribal governments to ensure that they could use the water that they have always owned has reverberated through generations, and it has a direct impact on the well-being of tribal members today. It's time we make this right for Zuni and for the Navajo Nation, and I want to thank you, uh, say thank you to the entire committee for your consideration today, and yield back my time. Thank you very much. Senator Tester. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to take this opportunity to welcome Frank White Clay. Uh, Frank, uh, we appreciate you being here again. He's back, uh, fighting for uh, fighting for the Crow people. I, I just want to point something out. We, we all in this committee work with Native American tribes all the time. Crows had their challenges with past administrations, uh, but Frank has stepped up in a big, big way, cleaned up what I think was an incredible mess, and uh, has got the tribe going in the right direction. Frank, we appreciate your leadership. Thank you, Senator Tester. Senator Cortez Masto. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Chairman Schatz and Vice Chair Murkowski for holding this hearing today on these important bills um, before the committee. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about S-4633, the Northeastern Arizona Indian Rights Settlement Act of 2024. This is an important bill. I support it. I agree that it is past time we reach fair and equitable resolutions to some of the longstanding water management issues in the Southwest. It is important we get the the details right. Um, But I do believe we need to ensure there's collaboration with stakeholders across the Colorado River Basin. Uh, I have a letter for the record, Mr. Chairman, from the Southern Nevada Water Authority in my state, who also supports this legislation. But because of the intricacies and nuances resulting from the inner basin um, and interstate nature of, of the Colorado River with the tribal lands, 
uh, believes that collaboration is key. And that's all we're looking for is to avoid any unintended consequences and to remain consistent with the compact in the Colorado River. Um, SNWA is respectfully proposing that Congress, the Basin States, and the tribes work together on technical modifications to 4633. And that's what uh, I will be looking for. So I would like to submit this letter for the record. Without objection. Thank you. Um, I'm committed to working with everyone to get this done. Uh, 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 and so I appreciate uh, the tireless effort that's been put into it, and I know what that is like. So please include us as, uh, at the table to make sure this, gets, this bill passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Senator Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I'd like to thank you and the vice chairwoman to, uh, for including the Northeastern Arizona Indian Water Rights Settlement Act and the Yavapai Apache Nation Water Rights Settlement Act in today's hearing. It's my honor to introduce Navajo President Boo Nigren, Hopi, Chair, Ch Hopi Chairman Timothy Nuvinyama, Yavapai Apache Nation Chairwoman Tanya Lewis, and San Juan Southern Paiute Vice President Johnny Leahy. President Nigren was elected to serve as the 10th Navajo Nation President in November 2022. President Nigren has a doctorate from the U University of Southern California. He has been involved closely with leading the Navajo Nation through the negotiation of the Northeastern Arizona Water Rights Settlement. Chairman Nuvinyama has led the Hopi Council since his election as chairman in 2018. He served as a tireless advocate for the Hopi and has been instrumental in negotiations that enabled the Northeastern Arizona Water Rights Settlement to come together. Chairwoman Lewis is an important voice in the Verde Valley, before her election as chairwoman, she served as vice chair and has been on the council since 2010. She's been personally involved in working with parties across the Verde Valley to come to consensus and develop a settlement that is designed for the future. Vice President Leahy Jr. currently serves as the vice president of the San Juan Southern Paiute Tribe. He was first elected to the council in May of 2022 and served as president prior to his current role. Vice President Leahy is serving on the council in the footsteps of his father, Johnny Leahy Sr., who served on the tribal council when the tribe was originally recognized in December of 1989. President Nigren, Chairman Nuvinyama, and Vice President Leahy, I want to commend you for your commitment to your communities. The fact that you have all come together after decades and multiple attempts at a settlement is truly historic, and you and your team should be recognized for your dedication to this large and complex settlement. The Northeastern Arizona Indian Water Rights Settlement Act will bring safe and reliable drinking water to your tribal communities in Arizona, establishing a homeland for the San Juan Southern Paiute Tribe. It's important to note that on the Navajo Nation, Approximately 30% of homes do not have access to safe and reliable drinking water. This settlement is an enormous step forward for securing your tribe's water future and providing certainty for Arizona and the entire Colorado River Basin. Without the settlement, a cloud of uncertainty will remain over tribal water claims in the Colorado River Basin, and tens of thousands of tribal members will continue to struggle to meet their basic needs. Chairwoman Lewis, I want to thank you and everyone who has been a part of the Yavapai Apache Nation settlement process for your dedication. The nation and the parties have worked hard over 15 years to complete the settlement. Working with the Bureau of Reclamation, the parties evaluated, evaluated numerous water sources and potential infrastructure options to achieve a reliable and sustainable water supply to meet the nation's current and future permanent tribal homeland needs. Ultimately, the delivery of C.C. Cragen water through the Cragen Verde pipeline is the best option. The settlement protects local groundwater aquifers from overpumping and thereby preserves these resources that are needed to meet the nation's water demands under its settlement budget. By reducing the capture of groundwater that feeds the Verde River, it also protects base flow that supports the Verde River. 
So this settlement helps to ensure Arizona's water future both in the valley and downstream. I urge my colleagues to support both of these important bills as they move through the committee process. Again, Chairman Schatz and Vice Chairman Murkowski, I want to thank you for holding today's hearing on these two important and historic bills. And finally, we are pleased to uh, uh, welcome again to the committee uh, probably the most frequent of frequent flyers, uh, uh, the Assistant Secretary of the Interior, Brian Newland. Um, before we begin, I want to remind our witnesses that your full written testimony will be made part of the official hearing record, and so we would just ask you to try to confine your remarks to five minutes or fewer so that we have uh, time for questions. Assistant Secretary Newland, uh, please proceed with your testimony. 